I don't, I can't even know for how long it has been today. And I'm kind of all computered out. So um, the faux pas, the, the glazed look, um, it's not you, uh, <laughs> I promise. All set, Amber? Yes, all set. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, this meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel at any time. I don't think anybody's dialing in, so I don't have to tell people who are on the phone to dial asterisk nine to raise their hand. And off we go. So um, what I'm... <clears throat> I have a question. Uh, if someone if yes, someone he, does show up, um, I will who will see them? Anybody who's in the meeting can see them. If you hit the participants button on the bottom of the screen, it says participants and it shows these little people and it shows a number 10. If you hit that, then you can see this thing on the side and it shows panelists and it also shows attendees. And right but now, I'm but I, I don't people. believe it actually would show Chris. Would it actually show like who the attendees are? It would just show yeah. like the. I mean, I've noticed in the meetings lately, like the council meeting, that it shows the number. You have if to not if them. you're not if you're a panelist, like if, if you're, you're just a, a member of the public, right? Yeah. No, but if you're a member of the public, you can't see who the other members of the public are. That's yeah. So in the meeting, Guilford, Amber, and I can see people who are out there. I think there's only three of us. No, we all can't because we're all panelists. All panelists. Oh, we're all panel. Okay. So, all right. But I'm it's just a, saying, like the general participants. It's it's a lonely it. world out there in like general attendee land, <laughs> <laughs> with these four or five hour meetings that happen in town sometimes. <laughs> were you at the town council meeting the other night, Tracy? I was on for part of it. Yeah. Yeah, that did go on for a long time. And I think that in the school committee meeting last night, I was kind of. Anyway, yeah, they go on for a long time. <laughs> so um, first up is, is um, I'm still trying to schedule a time when um, Doug Slaughter can come and visit with us. Um, his, his schedule, it sounds like it's kind of falling in between hours where he's always meeting on our nights, but we'll, we'll figure that out. But he did send a, um, a little note saying that um, <clears throat> the shorts, the super, the super short story is that the BVTA has reduced service because of safety protocols and it has to have had to modify its budget significantly. Expensive revenues are down and expenses are not. Uh, CARES Act money are helping and um, otherwise there is a gap in the revenue and PPTA is working to stretch those as far as possible. So um, I'm still working on figuring out a date when we can all get together. Um, he's, he's very amenable to, to that. Um, so he's a good guy. What am I looking for now? I'm looking for my copy of the agenda. And excuse me, I had a question about that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, is so, I mean, I remember back, I remember back, you know, a long time ago, there used to be, I was curious about like how many actual town routes there are compared to um, UMass transit routes. So, and how much, because, because the money like for UMass transit, it comes through the PVTA to UMass transit, I believe. But yeah. then, so then the PVTA, like somebody like Doug is not actively involved that much in the service and so on on the UMass transit routes. I don't know whether maybe we should be talking to somebody from UMass transit. And, or um, I, and I guess my question is too, how many other routes do we have? The, the town has zero routes at this time. Right. That's what I'm, yeah. All so the routes are either mass transit or PVTA routes. So yeah, I'm, um, I'm trying to remember who the, who's in charge of the- uh, Let well, Glenn Barrington, right? He's oh, Glenn Barrington, but there was there was was it was there was somebody else that used to speak with us regularly. I'll buy him before he retired. Yeah, so I'm going to make a note here to get UMass too. Um, but I mean, when the PBT has public hearings on their route and route changes, they do include the UMass routes. Yeah, but. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Um, so we'll we'll we will get we'll get as 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 when when we figure out these schedules, we can get people to to come in and and chat with us. Christine. No, I have to remind you to unmute. Darcy Dumont. There you go. Darcy Dumont is waiting in the attendees chamber. Oh, look at that. So a moderator can like add her. Amber added her, I think. I see oh, one attendee. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Darcy. We were just uh, just finishing up a long discussion on how to deal with the waiting room in Zoom. So, <laughs> um, um, and and we just, just, Doug Slaughter is, we're still working on finding a date when he can come talk to us about transit. And uh, there's been a suggestion to bring Glenn Barrington. I think he, that's that is the fellow who's in charge now. Um, he's often been willing to come and chat with us. So uh, I'd like to set up sort of regular meetings with those two at some point, um, <clears throat> semi-annually or quarterly or something that makes sense, uh, especially as we um, come out of this crazy time. Um, so Aaron, just a quick aside. I mean, I remember talking to Ben um, Glenn over the summer, I think, you know, about some of the root cuts and so on. And he said at that time that one of the issues was that without so many of the undergrads on campus, like they were actually one of the reasons for reduced roots was the driver shortage. Yeah. That well, it, that's, wasn't, that's, it wasn't just a COVID thing. It was like they actually didn't have drivers. Yeah, that's been so. a perennial problem. They, they um, it's hard for them to maintain drivers because they can't pay enough. They'd rather, rather it's, it's it's, it makes more money to deliver pizza than it does to drive a bus, apparently, or, or something. So, yeah, that's that's a real thing. Um, I just wanted to say that, that I, I did respond back to um, the Holst Road neighborhood. Um, got a very nice response back from them saying, yes, thank you. Well, you know, we're anxious to see how, how that goes. Um, uh, and I'm hopeful... Darcy and, and, and Tracy, who was there a little bit, that um, um, there's there's some news on the uh, the Pomeroy um, intersection decision. I, I see the timeline, and um, and um, we're so now with the uh, outreach to individual neighbors and part of the uh, the effort. So, um, is there news? Yes, Tracy. And just I mean back to Hulse Road. So when you when you're emailing like members of the community like that on the tax behalf, is it possible for the tax to see what you have sent them, either either as a like a blind CC at the time or maybe just at our next meeting, just so we sort of know. Uh, yes. What, that, that, uh, absolutely. What, what people are hearing or what their expectations might be or anything. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I can add you to the to, uh, add well, I don't know. Do you do you want to add us to the email? Because if you add us all to the email. Then well, I right. Yeah. I was... <laughs> no, I might, yes. yeah. No, no, so I might, just, might send yeah. a second. No, I yeah, understand. Send I might send a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also, if there's too many people on it, it gets put into people's spam folders. So we would never uh, do that just, coming from you. Just um, uh, for full disclosure, uh, uh, I know uh, Megan Rhodes, uh, yeah. and I've worked with her uh, through the uh, uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And yeah. Megan, uh, just, she, she's just a super person. She knows her stuff cold. Yeah. So if we want an ally in this, she's the best one to have. Uh, no, uh, and and, uh, and and when I when I share my letter, I'll share her response as well. It was very it was very nice. It was very good. Right, you and, can't be there. That's the way. Janet and I are part of the District Five Neighborhood Association, so that's the other connection I have with the yeah. list of people on and, and a couple of people I just sort of know. But those two connect those those are two organizations that people who are yeah. two organizations that I'm connected up with. So that, that, that raises the interesting question that when we begin to take decisions on things down here, um, you know, when we need to recuse ourselves. I, in this case, I don't think, I think just announcing that our relationship is enough. There's um, no, you know, there's no um, fiscal relationship. I mean, and I, yeah. I no longer, I'm, I'm no longer consult to FERCOG, so. Yeah. 
no, 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 that's right, no financial benefits, right? Right. But just to just to uh, note that I know those two people, and and again, uh, Megan is she's she's just a super uh, transportation person, and you know we want some help with this. She's and and she seemed very knowledgeable knowledgeable as well. I mean, that, that's yeah. I responded to her as if as, as if you were because I'd, I'd heard that she was in trend. Well, the last the last thing I worked on with her was a traffic calming thing in Northfield. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, so uh, what happened Monday night? I was not able to to stop in and listen, but I'm wondering what the story is with uh, the Pomeroy intersection. What decisions were taken? Um, so Tracy was there. Um, and Darcy, certainly. Well, are you talking about the town council meeting? The town, I'm sorry, yes, the town council meeting. Yeah, the town, um, the town council is going to actually have a formal presentation on the Pomeroy Mass Works project on the meet, at the meeting on the 25th. And then uh, they are going to um, decide whether or not they're going to refer it to a committee and it's likely that it will be referred to TSO, but that's not, it's not absolutely where it will go, but it, I don't know why it wouldn't. It seems logical that it would go there. Sometimes it goes to more than one committee, but anyway, um, I did talk to Paul about it and he, um, you know, I think one of the things that we want to do is figure out like what's the timeline and how all the different ent entities can interact with the timeline, starting with whatever the plan is for outreach. So, you know, it would make sense to me for TAC to weigh in on whatever the topics are. The, I mean, it, the, the, the issue of the roundabout is obviously gonna be a key issue. Um, and that's going to be, I think that's going to be a, a big um, part of the presentation on the 25th. And yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm looking at the, 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 the timeline, which goes from starting December 2021 to, um, uh, advert to bids going out in January 2022. So there's some time there, I guess. Um, all right. Well, very good. Um, and well, is, is the, with the with and correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think the thing with uh, Pomeroy is when we have to enter into a uh, an agreement with uh, the Commonwealth, and that's not that doesn't give us. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm. Uh, yeah, the contract is we have to have a contract by, by June 30th of 2021. So we've got five months. Yeah, so it's not 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 a whole lot of time, I guess. Sorry, right. don't get don't get wrapped up with the contract with the state. You actually have nothing to do with that, and it's not part of the project process, really. That's just the formalization of the agreement between the town and the state that we get the one and a half million dollars. Okay, and but my thought was we'd have to tell the Commonwealth what we're intending to do with their one point five million, or are they just accepting of? either of the two broad plans that were under discussion. They're accepting the two broad plans and they expect us to be finished with something by the 2023. Okay, thanks. So what time on the 25th, Darcy? That's, that's a Thursday. No, it's Thursday. Is it? No, I'm looking at the wrong month. Uh, it should be a Monday. It's a Monday, it's a Monday. And, uh... <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine as to what time. Um, you know, the agenda will come out on the Friday before, and um, it's probably going to be well, it's a presentation item rather than an action item. Um, that's usually toward the beginning of the meeting, but that means it could be anywhere from, you know, who knows? That, that's the guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, we will have more of an idea. Um, probably the Thursday or so before the meeting of okay. where it's going to come up. I will make a point to, uh, to, to look in on that. Thank you. That's good. Um, 
May I ask a question about that? Yes, Chris, please. Dar Darcy, do you know who is going to be given the presentation? Is it Guilford or Dave Zomek or um, Paul or whom? Guilford? <laughs> he was pointing at the screen. I'm not sure. What no. <laughs> Which direction? I, I don't know who's going to do it. I thought Chris was going to do it again. Oh, very interesting. That's what I'm asking. If I'm going to do it, I need to know. <laughs> yeah, no. We don't know yet. I don't know. I just know it's on the agenda, and mm -hmm. Paul has uh, has talked about it at some length. So I, I yeah, is I it know. likely to? Yeah, is it likely to have a lot of the old information? Is that what uh, what you might be giving us, Chris? <clears throat> well, what Paul is expecting, or what the council is expecting? So Ten I guess years ago, whenever it was, we last looked at that. Oh, 2013, and then back in like 2008. I yeah, think, uh, we talked about it a lot back then. Yeah, yeah. All right, excellent. Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm particularly curious as to what role we might be the TAC might play in in, in that, as you might know. Um, so Amber, thank you. We've got some minutes. Um, I how how they, they, they're they're greatly condensed, which I appreciate. Um, and um, I'm pulling them up here. Um, did, did everybody have, did anybody have a chance to, to look over them and um, to make comments um, for consideration? The, um, um, I appreciate the brevity a great deal. Um, I'm, I'm in the future, I, I think, I'd like to reserve the, uh, the, uh, the possibility of, 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 of bulking things out to make more of the description. I, I realize that this is what's required um, but uh, sometimes our discussions, we might want to put some more of the internal points into them. Um, but that's yeah. That's I do have the full transcripts. Also, if anybody wants to pursue them, I mean, or read yeah. through them in order to pull more of those points out. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, and like I say, I realize that this is this is the this is the requirement, uh, pretty much <clears throat> here. Um, I just know that um, minutes are, are, are a good tool for communicating to the public, or they're a tool to communicate with the public and something who might want to put more into them. Um, other than that, um, does, does anybody have a comment on these? Um, <clears throat> and I should look for hands when I ask for that and not look over at the minutes that I'm pulling up on my screen here. Um, but... Um, because otherwise, um, I would I would look for a motion. Uh, Bruce, thank you. I'll move to approve the minutes unless anyone has any comments or changes. And and, and let's be specific that they're for October fifteenth, twenty twenty, and for November fifth, twenty twenty, is presented. Yes. Um, I didn't go over them for for the uh, the punctuation and the other things that so many of us are good at, that, and I'm not. Um, but um, is there a second? Second. Is there further further discussion? Kim, was that a second or was that further discussion? Okay. That was a second, so. <clears throat> All those in favor then, just sort of put your hand in front of the screen and um, we don't have to ask anybody to recuse themselves because we were all there for these two. So thank you, Amber, very much for those. Um, it's kind of exciting to see them. You know, it, it feels like the you know the, the horse is being to move again. Um, North Pleasant Street multi-use path. Guilford has an update for us that I'm curious about. Which you'll need to unmute himself so we can hear. So, so behind me is the concept for the tunnel roundabout we're going to install on North Pleasant Street <laughs> at Pine Street. Underneath um, what ocean? I yeah. love the colors. Oh. That's the one in the Faroe Islands. Yes, I think so. <laughs> we, we found this and it's actually, it's like, it's really cool. It's like four, four tunnels that actually do come together and oh. they have the intersection in, underwater. It's really cool. Crazy. Yeah. But um, we, we showed you guys the, let me get the 
drawing is up again. The inner uh, changes we were talking about for the sidewalks on North Pleasant Street. And I will share that with you. I may share that with you. The intention is. All right, share. So the, the intention is to kind of start working on this and work on the easy parts of it. Um, the concept was to take one side of the road and to just repair the existing sidewalk and make sure it's five feet wide. And then on the other side of the road, that it'd be at least a eight foot wide to 10 foot wide multi-use type path. Um, there is some land tagging that has to be done, and but there are some sections we can start like if you look at the section that you're looking at now, this is the side of, um, this is the end, the north end of North Pleasant Street at Meadow Street and Pine Street. And we can, we have plenty of right away here and we can actually redo the sidewalks for a good deal of the, maybe probably a quarter mile of this stretch of the road before okay, we start running back. Can you explain the here. colors? Yep. So as you look at it, the blue is the new, Actually, my hand is running along the new multi-use path and it's outlined in blue. The dark blue double line is the curb line for the existing roadway. So to your right is the north and to your left is to the south, up is west and down is east. So. Is this up at the corner where the Korean, or the Japanese restaurant is? Yes. Yeah. So on this, on this section, we're going to have the west side is going to be the wider path and on the um, east side is going to be the narrower path. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing away with the little drive, the side road, this, this little side road here is going to go away and um, driveways will come straight out to the uh, frontage of the road. Um, will there be any additional lighting along there? For now, no. This is just going to be sidewalk improvements. Okay. Is that something we could work with Eversource or we would have to do it ourselves if we were to increase the lighting? Um, you could get, we could get, um, we actually own all the street lights in Amherst that are um, on the public way. Okay. So we would have to actually add additional lighting. Uh -huh. Yeah, this this looks like it avoids moving poles as well. It does. The road doesn't change; just the sidewalk is going to change. And we're just leaving the old little one. B. The excuse me. The little sidewalk on the west side. Is no, that little sidewalk's coming out. Okay. We're going to have a wider, just one side, wide sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Is the, is the other side of the street is the smaller side the smaller proper sidewalk on the other side is that um going to be improved like yes it'll it'll be widened to five feet at least and okay. repaved re great <laughs> so and this is sorry what are the um the 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 like v-shaped things that are intersecting with the red line i'm looking right in the middle is that a bridge or These right, this is a paved waterway. It's oh, where okay. the water goes from the road into a catch basin. Okay, sorry, thanks. No, it's a good, that's a good question. So this is- um, So this for is this, heading, I mean, it's a culvert? Yes, there's a culvert right here in the middle. And so does that need to get improved? We're gonna try to avoid it in this, at this crossing here. We'll, we're not, we don't really need to do much change here, so we're going to not really change much of the culvert. I see. Is there, is there a possibility of adding more lighting in the future? There's always that possibility, yes. Okay. Yeah, I want to um, just make sure people have seen our subcommittee walk report with recommendations on this. Because lighting was a, the reason Bruce is asking about lighting is because that was a big part of the subcommittee walk report.
So this well, some of us weren't on. So to Eve's question, some of us weren't on the committee then. But I know I believe all those block reports are on one of the pages on like the TAC page on the website on the town website. Um, Actually, I do think the path would be used much more at night. Obviously, if there would be more lighting, but I, I understand for budget reasons to do it maybe in stages. Yeah, well, and there was a, a death that uh, happened a few years ago that was, you know, part, because it was so dark. Yes, it is dark along there. And it does come into a town center, so. Is that something, Guilford, that at some point, would there ever be a state grant just for lighting a, 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 a multi-use path? I don't know. I mean, they give grants for everything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least to, as, as Aaron said, at least to a village center as well as the campus. I mean, it's it's a primary route. Uh, take to add lighting, Guilford. We can keep our eye out for it. People in my office have lists of grants that they look through every once in a while. Yeah, if you would, Chris, that would be really appreciated because I, I do think it, it is dark along there at night and. Uh, it would just be better for pedestrians and bikers to have more lighting. Tracy, so did you find the subcommittee walk report online? Because if not, I can yeah, it's right here. It's right on the TAC page. I can email the link right now. Okay. It's Thank under you. the TAC page and then under um, traffic, whatever. Yeah, complete streets Please. like subcommittee. So I'll, I'll send it right now. Is there a Tracy? Is there a chat you could just post it to? Oh, that's um. See, well, this I don't see um, one. Yeah, I'm not no. set up as a chat, but I believe yeah. I may be able to. Because these are done as webinars, I don't think we can do a chat. Um, even the even the hosts can. Yeah, moderators oh, well. can't mind. do one. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. No, no. I mean, right. you, you could show it on your screen and share it if you want to share that now. That's I'm just going to share the link directly and then people can read it. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, those those are good. Are you going to be doing those again? Um, they generate a lot of a lot of uh, good data. But well, I, uh, I think we'd have to wait till after COVID. Yeah, well, oh, well, there's that. Yeah. Uh, we had we had groups of neighbors who walk with us, so sometimes we'd have little groups of people. Yeah. It One of the great hard. things we had in the subcommittee at that time was we had someone who was a PBTA driver, and so we got a lot of really good insight into bus routes. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Guilford, when do you see this work as starting in the spring? So the the goal is is that we're gonna we're gonna try to line this up and start working this into our sidewalk repair. And then doing the sections that are doable without getting public more public way. And then so you'll see sections being widened and sections not being widened and the crews work jumping down the road. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, we do ex expect to start in this season. Oh good. Will there be on road bike paths added as well? No. Does that require widening the road? Is that the that, that requires widening the road a little more? Yeah. How much roadway width is there? Um, in some places, we're actually going right up against. Well, some places we're actually taking other taking new right away. So the green line in the drawing is the property lines. It's the green dash line, mm -hmm. green dash dash lines. So if you if you, um, I think we sent these all to you last before last meeting. Yep. You, I can send them again if you if you need them again. You can look at them. Um, this, on this sheet you're looking at now, there's actually four sheets to it. The sheet you're looking at now is um, basically the first entrance to Puffton coming south, and then the second entrance is to the left, and the it's still on the west side is the multi-use path, and on the east side is the improved regular sidewalk. And so we're coming up on the curve here, which is near the bus stops. It's still the same. The west is the multi-use path. The east side is the regular five-foot sidewalk. 
Um, this is Hobart Lane right here. Oh, that's the Hobart intersection. Is there still any thought of turning that into a roundabout? Um, there's still some thought, but there's really not enough money to do that. So that, that would be a future, a future phase to this. Can we just paint a white circle in the middle of the road? <laughs> We could try, but I don't. I don't not think that would. <laughs> it looks like on on um, many parts of the the drawings that you're giving us, at least on whatever the top part of I forget what which direction that is. The top part of your um, drawing, the red line, the existing red line, is the existing curb, and it looks like. So is the street getting widened in those places? Because it looks like the um, the proposed curb is further towards the top of the page on these um, drawings on much of that. Is that no, true? No, and this one here, the red line is the existing curb. And if you see a dark blue, that's the new. Um, right, I was just looking further up. Oh, so it's just getting widened. So the exist existing curb will, will stay there? Yes. Remain. Okay. I'm sorry. Yep. Got it. So it's just grass in between the curb and the bike path. It is. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Sorry. I didn't understand that. Yep. There's telephone poles in there too. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you look, if you look at the drawing, I mean, I, actually I'll zoom in a little. Can I zoom in? You can see the OHW, that's the overhead wire. And then you can see the pole, like there's a pole here, an overhead wire and a pole here. So that's mostly the- Got it, yep. Now, are those just telephone poles or do they have lights on them? Some have lights, some do not. Yeah. I mean, is there, is there a chance of adding lights to the ones that don't have it? Instead of having all new lighting poles, so that that's, would be less expensive. Um, it would, but not right at this part of the project now. Okay. Why not? Um, because most of the poles, if we add the light to it, it'll stick out over the road and we would have to do a different type of light to get back to the sidewalk. So you'd be lighting the road is what you'd be doing and not providing as much lighting to the sidewalk as you would want for the walkers. So that makes sense. There, is, there is lighting at the intersection, right, as, as I, at Hobart. Um, and that's light lit. Could you add lights to the telephone poles in addition to the lights over the street that these lights would just be pointing towards the bike path? Um, now we're just, light. it's just a matter of more, the more money you're adding to the project. Yeah. So how, how do we add lights, Guilford, most efficiently and as soon as possible? Um, I, I don't think we're gonna, we've already in this, at least in the section you're looking at now, there was, there's been four lights added there since, since the accident happened, or three lights, three lights there and one on Hobart. So most of the existing poles here, I think in this little curve actually have a light, a light on every pole. So there's not much you could add to that for, except you that want to add. Section. Yeah. My recollection is that when we did this walk that, um, that we, the lighting on the east side is even worse than the lighting on the west side. That's that's because the poles are all on the west side. Yeah, so we were thinking that if we because this is like the most trafficy street, pretty much in terms of walkers at night and often drunk walkers, um, as well as a pretty trafficy street, we thought it was really important to get lights in, um, and that they would actually be needed on both sides. In a lot of places, we wouldn't need them on both sides, but on this one, we thought there probably would. Would, would like pedestrian lights be cheaper, you know, things that go on the walkway, you know, so they wouldn't have to be as high, they wouldn't have to be as illuminated? Um, we'd have to run new conduit for all that or something. Oh, oh, that's the problem. I got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That wireless recharging only works on your cell phone when you set it on top. <laughs> Well, if that, if that is something that, that the planning department could be on the lookout for as some sort of a grant, that would really be helpful because it is a major route. It, yeah. You know, there are a lot of people who live along there and 
maybe there is some kind of a state or federal program that could be helpful with lighting. Are we going to run into potential issues with homeowners complaining it's too light? Too well, it's, it's you, if you do, though, what Kim said is have lower level lighting just over the path. You know, that's more expensive. But again, maybe if there is a grant of some nature that. Yeah. That well, on the concerns rate are usually about light going out. Like, I don't hear people complain much if the light is focused going down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we, we do know, I mean, that this is a maturing technology too to prevent light trespass and, you know, preserve dark skies as much as possible. So, <clears throat> and that's something I know that is always, always coming up. We do, we seem to have a shooter now in town and um, he's, he's taken out about two lights already. Oh, no. Yeah, one, one on North, uh, East Pleasant, and I think one on North Pleasant. Oh. The BB or bigger? It's much bigger. Oh. Shotgun? No, it's, a, it's probably a 22. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Or a really powerful pellet gun. It's, it's, it's making its way through the, through the light into the, Housing on the top. Yeah. Oh How destructive! Yeah. Wow. Right. When so did that start? Um, we noticed them. Uh, we started noticing them, and we got calls about them. This, the well, this the beginning of this year. So we, wow. we answered a couple calls, and they were shot. They, they weren't. Usually, it's the photo cell goes out, and you replace oh. the photo cell, but the whole inside was shot. Oh no. So, um, so, I don't, so, 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 Guilford, I had a question. Are, is there lighting on the um, east, uh, east, um, sorry, East Hadley Road path? No, there's no, there's no new lighting on there. Oh, okay, I was, I was gonna say we should do what they're doing. Just we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm assuming in that neighborhood too that they would want like some kind of lighting just because, like, I'm sure that that path is gonna get high pedestrian usage after dark given all the apartments and everything. But. So then, well, I, I don't see details on here, but I'm going to take it for granted that all of the transitions, the, the, the driveway crossings and the, uh, the curb cuts leading to the crosswalks are all um, super ADA compliant. The drive driveways and the sidewalk are the same. There's no there's no indication of when you're crossing a driveway. Mm -hmm. it's all, the driveway is level with the sidewalk. Okay. And, but the, 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 the crosswalks get the tactile strip or whatever? Yes. Yeah. Crosswalks are all the driveways into the, into the or all the roads into the housing developments and the apartment complexes, those are considered roads. So they get, uh, they get a ADA crosswalk and ramp and the whole nine yards. Um, and then when we get the crest view, which is actually just off to the right of this bottom picture, that's where we switch over from the big path being the big pass now on the east side and the little pass on the west side. Oh, yes. And so will it be we had, asked, we had asked for a price estimate of what it would take to keep the path on the west side. Yeah, it's not going to. You're not going to like it. We, yeah, we just, it means, I, means moving the road, right? It means moving pole, a lot of poles is really what it means. Because the, the poles stay on the west side, the whole run of the road. Now, there are sidewalks on the west side all the way, right, into North Amherst Center. There, there are sidewalks on both sides of the road right, right. now. Right, OK. Um, so then as you go, as you're going south farther here, this is your first, this is the first uh, crossing we may have a problem with and we have to do something with. Um, but if we do, we'll skip this section and jump over it. You mean the stream crossing? Yeah, right here. Is that just because you don't have enough land to play with? Yeah, it might be too narrow to put the sidewalk yeah. on, so we might have to. Um, and then we're then we start going again. We're heading towards the Methodist Church. Um, we have a little issue with this this stream crossing as well, um, and this may require 
um, some work as well. You may have to jump over this and skip this section as well. Okay, out of curiosity, Guilford, have you applied for any of those um, grants for upgraded stream crossings? We have. And are they possible to get? We haven't got one yet. <laughs> as, yes, um, as Guilford knows, uh, I've worked on the uh, the need for upgraded stream crossings for rivers and flood protection and a whole lot of other reasons. So they're really important, but they do add expense. Do you have graduate in the term, students that might be In the long term, they reduce expense because yeah. they last longer. Do you so have graduate students, Eve, that could, um, you know, fix them as well? <laughs> no, sorry. For, for credit? For credit. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to find someone to design one, but not to not to do the work. Oh, uh, not to do the manual labor. Yeah. 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 So I saw the new FEMA maps, and uh, some of these, not these ones, but in other places, the crossings are, are on the new maps. Does that help in getting uh, getting recognition for the need for grants? Um, they, they, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's really a, mount, a matter of. Um, it's it's really a matter of what the uh, type of stream you're crossing and um, they're really kind of prioritizing the high high value streams the cold water fisheries and Lincoln cold water fisheries have been broken um, there's really not a cold water fisheries along North Pleasant Street here so you're not really um, you're not including can you argue that Mill River is and these are connecting to Mill River yeah, but it doesn't really go very far up. It's very small and shallow. It's, it doesn't go very far. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they get less points. Yeah, so on the other side of Main Street, maybe. Yes. If we were to get that far, yeah. Um, so, and then we, down here, this is the Lutheran Church, I believe, this driveway here. And then we're moving back up. Um, we do have to take some property in here to make this work. Um, so some of this, we may end up doing mostly the west side, the five foot wide sidewalk, and then leaving the um, the east side for the for a year or two later. Isn't isn't much of the east side like UMass stuff, or it's 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 owner like it's it's rental unit. On that side. It's um, most, most of the east side is UMass, the church, and then rental properties. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Guilford, we've been moving toward recommending that the default sidewalk width is six feet rather than five in order to be able to have the um, inexperienced bicyclists outside of downtown be able to use it where there isn't, a, um, a, a, well, the, the level two bicyclists rather than the level three or four bicyclists. So could the five foot one be made to be six feet? Um, probably not. <laughs> um, some places, yes. A lot of places, no. So would that just be an automatic thing? Like if you can make it wider, would you make it wider? Sometimes we do. It, it depends on it depends on what's near us and what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, because five feet. Like, why not, right? I mean, if you can't. Well, Five feet, is, five feet is perfect for right now. I mean, we have snowplow equipment that can handle five feet. Oh, I see, right. Yeah, those little snowplows, those tiny ones. If we do six, we have to, we'd have to change the snowplows around again. If you do six, do you have to snowplow six feet or can you snowplow five feet on a six foot sidewalk? Uh, we can do five feet on a six foot sidewalk but then people are saying the sidewalk's narrower. <laughs> Well, only during snow season. Yeah. Six feet according to the, season. yeah, I mean, according to the, the bylaws, though, it's a courtesy snowplow, right? And the, yes. the, the um, right. homeowners are still on the hook for actually cleaning the sidewalk. I was going to say, because I'm out shoveling my sidewalk and it's not even intact, as you know, because I put a thing on the, whatever, <laughs> the flick fix. It's broken, <laughs> but I still shovel my sidewalk. Yeah. No matter I how just, I think I think this is an important place to really try to widen the sidewalk yeah. because you have a really high population of students and a ton of people walking up and down the strip. If you want anybody to bike, 
they are going to, first of all, a lot of them are going to be bad at it. Um, if they bike in the road, there's no bike path. So they're going to be biking on the sidewalk along with all the people that are walking. Uh, if you don't want it to be chaos, and if you actually want to encourage people to bicycle, which I think we do, on a wider space, you know, and, and most of the students are on the west side, and a lot of them are just going to continue down the west side, even if there's, you know, a wider path on the east side for part of it. Well, and also if we, we, we think about uh, the population up in the neighborhood there, there, there are a lot of families, a lot of uh, new bicyclers that be coming out of there. We would want to encourage new bicyclers to be coming out of yeah. there, only the students. It's I mean, it'd be even better if we could get bike lanes on the road so the more experienced, but at least like on the side that doesn't have the eight foot path to have a bike lane on the road. Yeah, get me off the sidewalk, I know. Experienced bicyclists could be on the path. Yeah, right, and the sidewalk could have the hundreds of students walking instead. Um, but if there's no, you know, that would be the preferable way to do it. But if yeah, there's and unfortunately, a bike lane, then at least add a foot on the sidewalk on the west side. This is one of the few routes in town that I've seen people, because there is no berm whatsoever. I mean, your berm, you have the line and then you have the sidewalk. I, heading from UMass to um, the North Amherst intersection, it's one of the few places, even I, who am like a, a fearless cyclist, have felt unsafe multiple times. And actually I had a postdoc of mine actually um, to avoid a, a car, like un ended up heading a little bit to the right and hitting the sidewalk and falling over onto the sidewalk. It is very dangerous right there because people are just speeding along. Um, so I, I agree. This is, this is a pretty tough um, section of town to navigate. And, yeah, and our recommendations we suggested if needed, just go ahead and reduce the travel lane by a foot on each side. Yeah. Everywhere, <laughs> overall. Well, and also students are speeding between like the, the, um, the housing and UMass as well, it seems like. I mean, it's, it, and it's so busy, right? Because, because people are using that to get out, you know, to get north into their homes or further onto highways and stuff. It's it's a major commuter route. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Yeah. yeah. For everyone, walkers, bikers, and cars. And it's just not wide enough, right? For any any of them. So so on a on a on a different um, part of the project, how many I, I, I can't see on this and I'll I'll look at my drawings, but how many trees are we going to have to trim or remove to, to make this happen? Is it any? I mean, these, these are quick glimpses, it doesn't look like there are any, but. Most of the trees that come out are on property that we're, new property we're taking. So we kind of take mm -hmm. the trees down before we consider it town way. So it's oh, <laughs> I see. Well, okay. So that, 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 that satisfies the, 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 uh, the technicalities of it all, but, uh, but. But the big lines, the big solid green lines are new trees, right? Isn't that what I saw? Gilford. It is like yeah. this one here, this one you're looking at here, which is across, this is um, a rental property and we're proposing to take away and redo their driveway and then put a bus pull off here and then put new trees in here. This yeah, is I the existing bus pull off now over here. Where is that? Is This is, um, the, this is the driveway into what used to be Mark's Meadow. Uh, okay, so this is right across from the Ed School. This is... Yeah. Yes, this is across the street from the ed school. Yeah, that's my bus stop, right. <laughs> so does the town still have uh, uh, tree, trees to plant from the, the zillion trees that, that uh, were in, in inventory a couple of years ago? I know that they, they've been plugging through and trying to get them planted. No, we've pretty much planted 300 trees. We've done, okay. We've done. We're still planting trees. We just finished that. Go, Henry. So this is what we're proposing. Where's, and it, yeah. where's the street on the west side by those two trees? The new trees? Yeah. 
Where's the street? I don't see the street. This dashed line is actually the street line. Oh, I mean the side street that goes into that little neighborhood. Like, is it this where? one here? Is that where it is? Okay. Yep. This is um. Oh, I can't read it. Fairfield. Fairfield. I think Fairfield? so. Old Town. This is Old Town. Okay. So then, where's um, the next one north? And then. This here is Berkshire Terrace, mm, right here. No, there's one. There's one in between those. And this is Fairfield over here on the match line. Okay, Fairfield's the one I was looking for. Okay, because that's where the bus stop is now. Yeah. Uh, so, so the the the, the bus stops and the, the the major modifications that we're seeing here, that's for a little bit later when we actually do work on the road. <coughs> Uh, we're we're going to try to we're going to try to get the bus stop in, but we actually have to get this. This we need new more land here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, this is the overall concept and layout that we're shooting for. So, um, you know, from this this ten thousand foot view, um, it looks pretty good. Like uh, as, uh, in regards to our complete streets policy and and concepts. Um, how much of a compromise is this to that? Okay, the the, uh, the the two stream crossings things seem to get a little bit narrow. We don't have a complete completely. Uh, we don't have a robust sidewalk or multi-use path and everything else. But generally, how do we do in the rest of this? We're doing pretty good, except for the fact we have no no but no bike lanes. That's the only thing that we Not don't have bike lanes on the road. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Where the crossing is right there, uh, Guilford, where the uh, you go from one side to the other, is anything going to be done to make that as safe as possible? Is it um, will there be uh, lines in that crossing or extra lighting or what could be done to make that as safe as possible? Um, well, we could make it a no vehicle zone. <laughs> Well, that would be ideal, but yeah. Go with it, Bruce, go. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you put an, is there a potential for an island in the middle or something? Or is that just going to make it too wide? It's, it's um, we don't have enough layout to uh, do it yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean, what, what's kind of happening is all these bigger crosswalks and main roads are all getting the, the flashing beacons. So I imagine as this works its way through the process, it's going to, and that this crosswalk will have a beacon, and then all the ones from here back to North Pleasant or to Meadow Street will have a beacon as well. You mean the ones like up by Cushman or the ones out the side of Amherst College? Um, the ones like uh, on Pine Street and the ones yeah. on East Hadley Road. Okay. And so there'll be signs leading up to them as well, pedestrian crossing ahead kind of thing. Yeah, and then the little button you push and it goes flashy, flashy. And so I, I didn't see many others. I, I saw, I see this one, but how many other crosswalks? Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't, I just didn't notice. There's not on that one. Yeah. So we get here, this is Hobart. There's one here. Um, and that's about it. There's, there, yeah. well, I think there's one more. Must be here. I think there's three, but I don't <clears throat> see them. Is there one near the little uh, farm stand? Because that I would imagine people would cross the road there to get over to the, oh, to the simple shop. Simple gifts, you mean simple gifts? Yes. That's yeah. A good idea. Yeah. I don't think there's one there. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I, I thought I didn't see very many, which is kind of. Uh, there's only two right now. So. Um, At either end, obviously, of the whole thing, like. Yeah. Where is where is simple gifts along here? Um, it's on this third. It's on this page. Actually, simple gifts is uh, right in this area here. It says North Amherst Community Farm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these two right here. 
And is that is that a street to the north across the street? Uh, no, this is a driveway here. A driveway, okay. And then the Puffton um, is, close, is more that way, yeah. Yeah, the, I, I keep having to move your picture so I can see the whole drawing. <laughs> Sorry. No. So if there, if there oh. is a, if there so could this be would a be crossing. the, this would be the first road crossing that you possibly could do is right in the here. So if there could be another one near that uh, farm, I, I, that might be a good idea. Well, actually, this is um, this parcel across here is actually the farm too. Mm -hmm. Can you point to that? Put your pointer on it because I don't see it right here. Right here. Can you see it? I don't. No, I don't see any. I don't see your hand. On the on the uh, to the south, Kim, on the east side, uh, the, all the yeah. way to the right. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You see oh. The... It's because it's because your faces are yeah oriented <laughs> there. I'm sorry. Yeah. I had to keep moving your faces too. <laughs> yeah, got it. Yep. So that's that's the parcel where the two houses are. Right. The new. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. What and about that? Where? Um, yeah. What is what's happening where um, the the grad student housing? What what's actually ha what's going in there? You know the um, the family more, housing. More grad student housing. Okay, but is there going to be a is there a crosswalk? Isn't there a crosswalk there? Um, there There's, is. That's there this is. one. That's it right here. But it, oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yep, got it. Because there, yep. Here's the bike station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And across the street is that beautiful bus stop. This one. Which is so lovely. Yeah, yeah. So it's still going to be family housing there. That's yeah. um. I think they haven't decided 100% yet. But it's going to be private. It's not UMass, like. It's, it's, UMass, it's UMass land with a private company running Manager. the housing. Yeah. North Village, right? Yeah. So um, I was wondering, well, I'd like to suggest that you guys consider recommending uh, changes as much as possible to get this to the state of what we have in our draft level of service level two, because we said that we want to aim for level of service uh, two um, for any place where we might have an experienced bicyclists or pedestrians or wheelchair users. And what we have in that is um, driveway crossings marked to prioritize the path flow. Um, if, well, what, do you, what do you mean marked? Like, what does that look like? Because I've never- I would, just a, I would, I would think at, the, at a minimum, a white line at either side of the sidewalk as it crosses the driveway. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, not the, not the bright green stripe that, that is typically done. Yeah, right, yeah. that would be a little too much. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's only- um, those are only done on road crossings. Those aren't done in every driveway. No. Yeah. So that's what we put in our level of service too, at least as a draft. And that yeah, and that that's that's an interesting question, um, which which I might expand a little bit. So, uh, in order for us to get the whole length of this thing into our complete street form, um, what? So two things. One is it's going to want to make sure that what we do doesn't preclude that happening easily in the future. But second, um, how do we get from here to there? And what would that take? Now you've suggested that there's some land takings. Okay, that, that's a little bit of work and, and extra expense. But um, how, much, how much expense? Um, if, if we were to advocate for you know, bumping it up a notch, not only to level two, but just generally for, um, for uh, the complete st completeness of street. So you have, there's a lot of projects lining up behind the projects uh -huh. we already have. So if you want to make each project perfect every time, you're now cutting into how long you, before you go to the next project. Um, well, I think you may not want to make it perfect, but we want to consider it at least. <laughs> You know, I understand. I mean, it's it's a matter of prioritizing, a matter of of you know, this and that. I mean, this basically, 
the problem here is if you want to start widening out for making bike lanes on the road, you, you also have to start moving power lines. Yeah. Is that the, is that the big thing, the power lines? That's the big thing. Yeah, that's millions. I, I, I know. Well, it's just, it's, it's much more cost. I, okay. I, I hate to say it this way, but it's easier to, it's easier to kind of make a tree weak and have it fall on a power pole and knock the power pole out and the power company moves it back is an easier way to move power poles than, uh, than paying them to do it. So, so are you suggesting maybe we should, we should fire the current snowplow drivers who seem to be very good about staying on the road and hiring ones who don't? No. Well, can't you just send the guy with the 22 around to start shooting some trees up and weakening them that way? I give him a 12 gauge and let him take out a couple of poles. They don't seem to enjoy that as much. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well. Well. Um, <clears throat> so thank you, Gilford. This is this is this is good. I'm I'm glad to see that this is moving along. Um, so if you if you want to make recommendations on some changes, you might. I would go ahead and do it because it, it will have to. It will go go probably to the council because they'll have to know what's going on and approve kind of the change in the concept of the sidewalks. Um, so you can you can make more recommendations if you want. I yeah I feel like we should make recommendations that the um, the sidewalk be at least six feet and. You know that a priority in the, if not now in the future be lighting sounds like I, I would second that um that's good now so um as part of the further discussion um how much you know I, and and looking at it quickly and, and i didn't do my homework and look at the stuff you sent earlier um how much sidewalk is now five feet how much what do we what do we recommending how big a change is that recommendation um how much is already five feet out there well no how much of it uh, in the new concept is six feet which is to say how much of it is not six feet how much are we adding well the multi-use path we've got that if i let me uh let me move everybody again <laughs> So the multi-use path we're putting in at eight, and then every and then everything else is five. Oh, everything else is five. Well, how about if the we stay with the five foot when there is the multi-use on the other side of the street, but when the multi-use comes over. And narrows to five feet could that section be six feet i just i think you want everywhere to be six feet uh because of that, the number should be the, right. the fact that, that students aren't always going to be crossing the road the fact that it's still going to be dark a lot of the time many of these college students are going to be drunk you want to have the space on both sides we want people to be social distanced they can't be social distanced <laughs> on a five feet path <laughs> I can't even quite make it on a six foot path. There you it's, go. It's, it's a, COVID, <laughs> a COVID path. Maybe, but, maybe, we should, maybe we should do a European style. Which is? The sidewalk's about three feet wide and the bike, bike little path is about three feet wide. Separately. Yeah, but they're side by side. Yeah, they're yeah. marked. Yeah. But then or, you get the people that walk in the bike path and wonder why yeah. you hit them. Yeah. So annoying. Hilford, how much more taking <laughs> would you have to do if you made this sidewalks where they're currently five feet wide, where uh, make them six feet wide? How much more takings would you have to do? There's quite a bit more takings. Could you narrow the roadway width by one foot instead? If we were to do that, we wouldn't use it for sidewalk. We'd use that for shoulder in the road, for bicyclists in the road. But one foot that's is really, shoulder, isn't That's it? really important too. Honestly. Well, so that that's an interesting that's an interesting compromise. I, I, I'm so right now. This doesn't show a painted bike lane on the road. No, there isn't, and there won't there isn't. be. What he's saying, and, and there won't. So, with the narrower sidewalk, there's a possibility for bike lane. 
There's more of a possibility of a bike lane in the future if the sidewalk stays at five feet. Okay, yes. in the future. All right. So, so, um, I think Gilbert was talking about a shoulder rather than a lane. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm exploring the idea of making that shoulder a real lane, it's sort of adding an extra width. Um, I mean, if you could get a five foot bike lane on the road um, next to the five foot sidewalk, you know, that would be. That that would be good because then you've got room for or, or a four foot bike lane. Technically, bike lanes are supposed to be five feet. But. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> not 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 quite as far as that, Kim. That's a. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. Can't we just make um, North Pleasant one way? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that, that was idea. actually that solves it. <laughs> um. That was actually proposed once that you would go one way down North Pleasant, you'd go up Pine Street, you'd loop back down on East mm -hmm. Pleasant yeah. and make a big cool. loop. Well, wait, and it was going to bypass UMass. I thought there was a bypass UMass plan, right? Well, that's the, yeah, UMass wants us to bypass them on one section of, U, of North Pleasant. Yeah. What if you made the sidewalk six feet wide in places where you have enough right of way and you don't need to do more takings? And left it at five feet where you don't have enough room. That's an idea. How much of how I mean, how much of the uh, street would that be? I'm I'm looking here now. I mean, we, towards we, the north side, you're pretty good, right? We would we would push it towards the we would if we were to do that, we wouldn't take the. The land towards the road we take the land towards the houses yeah. mm -hmm. like in, in this in this piece here i mean there there's right here there's probably five feet between the edge of the sidewalk and the right. property line there um then it narrows down uh -huh. maybe three or two here right. so you still maybe got two. enough time yeah right i mean you've still got enough room to get out an extra foot potentially you do way. yeah how much land do you have to take to make that extra foot of sidewalk? Is it just the foot or do you need an additional amount for foundation? It's just, a, it's really an extra foot because we've already, I mean, when we do five feet, it's normally six foot wide base, mm -hmm. a five foot, five foot wide sidewalk. So you're just adding another foot of base on there. Yeah. So. Okay. So you've already got it kind of included. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Kim, so, you were thinking that adding a shoulder where possible would be good. Yeah, I mean, as a as a cyclist who's not going to go on a path, right. with people who are treacherous. So, so Kim, th those are two amendments that we're considering to your motion. Uh, do you want to accept those? Yes. So six foot where possible. Uh, shoulder where possible. Takings. Shoulder. Where possible. That, the definition of where possible is without further takings. Is that right? Yeah. Right. That's it. That's that's the working definition. And and, and we were and also Kim, you're going to add and a, a future lighting. And and yeah, a priority of lighting. And and, and the priority on this right. on particularly on the 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 big section. You know, yes. if we have to say one part of the road, the road where the eight foot path is. Yes. Priority on multi-use path. Priority of lighting, first multi-use and then the other side. But lighting on the paths, on the walking paths, yeah. Yes. So, so six, six feet, um, Sidewalks where, where, where we don't have to take land, shoulders where possible on the street, and priority of, of lighting on, on the path as soon as possible. Okay, Bruce, are they good for the second still? I'll, I'll second that. I, I have a question. Uh, for the discussion, Eve. <laughs> Sorry, on the shoulders, Guilford. What um, lane width were you aiming for? 
Um, we actually are going to probably try to go down to 11 feet through here. More because the oh, buses right. are the buses are out here. Right. Yeah, the, the I talked to folks in Eugene, Oregon, and they go for 10.5 or even less, even for routes that buses travel normally. So that would give an extra half foot on each side per shoulder potentially. So that's fine for Eugene, Oregon. I don't think I want to go any lower than 11 and have the buses on it. I mean, you remember who's driving the bus? Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, also, at, at some point, um, when does the fire department begin to to oh, grow? That's a very good point. This is yeah. just paint, Aaron. It's not, not <laughs> right. This is just where you put the paint. The fire truck can go over the paint. Yeah, if yeah, I guess, I guess there the is that. In the paint, <laughs> might have a problem with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, actually, we're, and we're talking. I mean, I sent some information to the town manager. He's going to forward it to the TSO about. Lane widths and parking. And in that information, we're kind of like saying eight and a half feet would be the smallest lane width we would be willing to go to on a local street. And then I think 10 is the smallest we would go to on one of the, these streets. Um, but I prefer not to have the bus routes, the bus lanes on them or the bus, bus route on one of those streets. Yeah. Eight and a half is actually the legal limit for Massachusetts without a special permit. The legal, sorry, for what? Uh, for road width? Vehicle widths. Yeah. The thing is that if you narrow the width, it tends to make drivers slow down. And this is a place where traffic is often going faster than is safe. But that's part of the idea. Sorry, Marcus. You Marcus. Up. I was going to say, talking. my, I hey, just, from, I'm just recalling back to my first experience with the TAC, not being on the TAC, but uh, going to a meeting um, with about the discussion of a roundabout at the north end of the road that we're talking about. And the drivers that spoke up, I think would not appreciate an eight and a half foot um, lane width i think they would be the ones that given the size of the traffic that goes on it might appreciate a little bit more of a space between them so yeah i was well, suggesting 10.5 yeah yeah, yeah. The, the, the the uh the um and, and coding 10 as a minimum i think is that's a that's a good thing eight and a half and ten are, are i think are good widths i, I appreciate that gilford so um so what what form um Guilford or, or Chris Darcy, I think has gone on to other meeting already. Um, do we put this motion, this this resolution, whatever we're going to call it, into? Um, Actually, has the other meeting already started? Well, I, I, I noticed that Darcy has, has disappeared, so I think so. And and Bruce, the, T, where the TSO meeting? meeting starts at six thirty. Okay, oh. I have to be there too. So sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, and and Bruce has to leave it at, at um, as well. Um, and this well, this meeting ends. Cat is bothering me. Um, okay, so um, all those in favor, somehow indicate Amber. Uh, it's going to count hands. Let's say, oops, um, that looks unanimous to me. Um, and I guess um, Guilford and Amber will will will. Type this up and edit it and make it make it um, appropriate to send to the, the the town council and I'll copy the TC, TSO and the town manager. This is All right, very, thank you. This is very exciting. This has been in the works for a long time. Yes, indeed. Yes, that'll be nice. I agree. Um, I wanted to to continue our work on getting. Um, a presentation or a, a response to the as yet unproposed questions uh, from the TSO to the TAC about what we do and how we do it. Um, so that this is the project list prep for town council is what, what that means. Um, I'm hoping that we can take some of the remaining five minutes to look at that uh, with Guilford and um, just consider how we might want to uh, modify it uh, before we 
we send it along as, as a, a, a response to what I'm sure will be a question. Um, and, and then we, you know, maybe we'll do the editing off, off, you know, when we're, we, we all don't have to run away. Um, Tracy. Um, so I had been under the impression after our last meeting that, I mean, there are the two lists, I call them like the big list, like with the big financing and the little list for the other projects that have also been requested, which I guess even, I mean, I do have a question about like whether Hulse Road would now like fall onto that, you know, where we're keeping track of like the main capital so the, projects. Um, but I was under the impression after the last meeting, Aaron, that you were just going to go ahead and forward those two spreadsheets to the council or to the TSO. Yeah, not not the two, the one, the one long one. Oh, all right. Um, but and, I, I mean, I think that they might be interested to see that there is this other list too. Yeah, well, that was, yeah, we ran into problems with that, though, because that, that is, that's, you know, finished projects and, and uh, really it, it, it was getting into territory that might not be ours. But yeah, before we sent the, the long list, I just wanted, you know, to get, get specifically, because we just talked about it very generally last time, but get specifically our ideas about how we should, we should form it. So I'm hoping Gilbert can pop it up there for a second, the long list. Yeah, I'm trying. I guess Hold I on. don't know which is the long list and the short list. You mean the one okay, with so the, the, the main, long the list main is everything. projects? Yeah, the long list is everything with the date that we received it. Mm. And um, that's the, this uh, one. No, right. And, yeah, this is the long. Oh yeah, one. so you have them. Both, they're they're both in the same spread. Oh, I'm sorry. They're both. File. In they're different tabs, right? Right. So this would be the the tab, and the um. And then the projects tab is the one that has the funding and the the um, right the uh, yeah that. But then I guess back to the citizens request tab. Like at this point, because there was this request with the Hulse Road neighborhood, would we be adding Hulse Road? Yes, I, I think mean one of the things I wasn't clear on with this one is like it hasn't it doesn't there hasn't been any updates in like over a year, for example. Right. Right. And I mean, I'm sure that the town has still been, I mean, I, I know people who've submitted additional requests. Yeah, well, to, but yeah, to us, I mean, this is stuff that's coming to us. Um, so, the, uh, the wildflower thing, that didn't come to us. I don't know where that went, actually. The wildflower, and then also, I know someone who requests one out at, like, um, the neighborhood that's just uh, south of Atkins. There was somebody who had, who had been asking about that one anyway one's actually on here um oh, okay also log town oh, see wildflower do you see guilford has wildflower on there oh yeah it did come to us okay and well. you put elf hill on nice job okay <laughs> elf hill has been on there forever so oh well because it says it says december 17th it's become hulse though so um uh, actually, I'm I'm kind of happy to throw this over the wall with a little cover sheet saying, "Look, here's here's the stuff that's been coming in that we've been um, trying to prioritize, and so some of it's turned into projects." And um, if that's if that's okay, I, I mean, I think it shows right. it shows and the TSO right. where we are now. I mean, I I mean, as as um, Darcy said, she thought it would be very informative. Yeah. for the council to even know that these lists exist and yeah. i mean it is they know they exist they don't know what's going yeah exactly so so, so when, that's that's when does this go to the council or when do we talk to the council uh, that's something you know i i i haven't talked to um paul this week it's been a crazy week so i i have, have not given a push to get us on any of those agendas uh, but I will. Yep. Yeah. So what what are the tabs, the detailed projects tab and the sheet ones tab? Sheet one's empty. Detailed project is nothing. Oh, so not yet. Who knows? Yeah. What, what, we were just putting over. notes in here. These are like my notes and notes other. That's all. Oh I sure. Work. No, I understand. Yeah. I mean, I guess if we're just forwarding it forward, right? To yeah. Well, and we had talked about like at some point. Um, if the with the website redesign, if there's like a way to turn it into some 
right. viewable dock where like the public could also view it. Huh? Yeah. We, we mentioned or maybe that. get or maybe get you know six month updates or something. Yeah. Right. When, once once. Awesome. Once we decide to post it, it can be posted, and then it's just a matter of updating it, updating them what's on there. Yes, that's no biggie. Yeah, and that that might also feed a, a, a thank you for your note, Tracy. By the way, I haven't responded back in writing, but oh. uh, uh, that might feed into the the looking forward, the the work plan idea that that I do want to talk about at some point. So wait, so Aaron, were we taking a motion about just moving this to the, it seems like we would send it to the TSO, right? Because it mainly right. is involving things with the right of way. Yeah, that, that, I think this this is because, um, because two members of the TSO um, have asked for, have suggested that they will be asking for this, that we do send it to them. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and, you know, I would want to copy Paul, of course. We don't have to vote to send that. I mean, you can just send it, can't you? I can, but yeah. I just I just wanted to, because we had talked about this and we really hadn't quite settled saying that this was a, a sort of the form. I just wanted to make sure before I did that, that, that I understood that we feel that this is a good form. Be so, good to go. That seems so fine. I guess I have a question about the title though. It says FY 2019. Oh, that we, <laughs> that's when it was put together. That's when it started. All right. I mean, maybe if we were sending it to the council and yeah, the well, no, we'll, people and yeah. So. We'll give the appropriate title. Um, yeah. And the other things that I'd hope to get to was, was um, an update from, from Tracy on the prioritization. I guess- um, We have one minute left, so. Yes, we do. That's, that's yeah. the speed into that. Um, and so I guess the, the, uh, the open question there is um, to figure out what the resources are we might want to ask for. Um, um, Guilford suggested there might be something that we can tap into, but we haven't been able to figure out what that is exactly. Um, so that's that's what that conversation will be. And I'll leave this on the list for next time. Well, but uh, it's, it sounded, Aaron, from the last meeting, right, Guilford had said he had a consultant in mind and um, that one idea could be that if the subcommittee's at a certain point to to move forward with the consultant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the subcommittee, I mean, when Bruce and Eve and I had talked earlier, you know, we talked about where we were and the additional information we need. So, yeah, so I, I feel like, like if a consultant's been chosen or is close to being chosen, then maybe that's something that we can progress. Yeah, but I would, um, I'd like that sort of that that impetus to come from the, the whole group saying yes, here's the consultant, who it is, go for it, sub sub. Okay. Well, it sounds that, like that. I matters. agree. I agree. I think there needs to be an agenda item for. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and um, and can there? I know we're running out of time, but can there also be an agenda item just about the tax charge? Like Aaron, you said that you've talked yes, to. Yeah, that, that was in your note as well. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I just feel like we're sort of stuck a little bit now. I mean, the council members, you know, the TSO people have been asking questions about the TAC and saying, well, you know, so, the TAC doesn't live up to its charge, but we've tried to change the charge and so we're sort of stuck. And, and, they, like, they know and what, we need to they get out of that. These are that we're hoping for. So I, um, to talk with I think the answer is yes, especially because I expect when uh, we send this first response with the, the, the long list that we'll begin to get some um, some feedback, which is what we're really are needing. But, but we're not sharing our draft charge yet no. because you're still waiting for feedback from Paul unless you've heard from Right, well, they, I mean, they have, they, they, the TSO knows what that is. What um, the draft charge is? We haven't given it to them, you know, as this is something we're proposing, but this is something we're working on. So, yeah. Um, right. I propose we um, we we are done for tonight because we all need to move. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so this has been a very That's long right. day with the computer. This has been a really productive meeting. <laughs> I'm very glad about that, but it seems like a couple of us need to move on to our next meetings or whatever. Yes, so. yes exactly. No, I appreciate. It. I appreciate you all coming in for that. Um, I think we lost um, Chris already, right? Chris is yeah. Gone. I think we lost Chris. We lost Darcy. We're going to lose Bruce. Who's and Guilford? Yeah, Guilford's gone. Yeah, so and Guilford's got to go. 
Yeah. And thank you, Amber, for hanging in there to the end and catching all of that. And thank you for the minute. We'll Welcome. see you in two weeks. In the meantime, enjoy the sunshine. Yes. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Happy New Year. Happy New Year.